My inbox lately has been filled with lots of curious inquiries about how to develop the piano playing technique. Ironically, they all seem to be enchanted by the idea that there is some kind of a special trick or exercises that can fast track them to the front line. I hate to tell you that there's no such thing, but the bigger problem seems to be in the misconception of what virtuosity is. So let's talk about it in this episode. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. My name is Ferdi Talan. If you try to fit a square peg into a round hole, you will forever be trying. Piano playing is about understanding your anatomy and how the principles of movement applies to you. Even though there is a need for standardization, you must first realize and accept that everybody is built differently, that people are unique to his, her, or their own. Not only there are physical differences, the processing centers also differ. You must translate every module of piano playing into how you're built and function. Because it works for everybody else doesn't mean that it will work for you and vice versa. Let's take this Chopin etude as an example. This etude has larger interval leaps between notes in the right hand, which makes you want to stretch, but you won't be able to play it if you do. always moving to the next one and never am I stretching my hand. to play this etude, what do I do? I can't play it, right? Not necessarily so, because you could also do it some other ways. For example, the first left hand is an octave C, and the first note in the right hand is also a D C. So you could take that with the left hand. That's the first one. And so if you take out the first C from the grouping, what does it left you? Hey, that's not so far as compared to this. This is fine, I can do this. Right? So if you group it that way, smaller and for smaller hand it becomes manageable. There are no amounts of finger strengthening or dexterity exercises whatsoever that can catapult you into piano mastery if you do not know what you want to say. The point of figuring out how to technically solve a problematic passage is so that you can have the freedom to express. Piano playing is the combination of mind, body, and spirit. To explain it very simply, the inner listening perceives it first, sends information to the brain, which then processes and tells the body what to do. In order to achieve this kind of physical freedom, you need considerable body awareness. There are many ways to build it. There is Feldenkrais, also Alexander Technique, all kinds of yoga certainly helps, and meditation is a good way to start. Find out what works for you. 
if there are any inhibitions in the body, your movement will become strained and you won't be able to fully control how you enter the key, thus producing an unpredictable sound. This is from this funeral and in the lovely monster section where it's very, very delicate, you can't hold on to the tension after the sound happens because if you stay here, you essentially you hit the next note from the air and you can't control any aspect of it. So what you need to do is you need to move constantly to the next note. I'm already moving here. I'm already on the F flat. And as I listen to the D K, I catch it. The way you do things on the piano are the way that you do things in every aspect of your life. This means that practicing extends beyond the instrument. If you want to improve an aspect of your piano playing, improve the quality of how you exercise that in your daily life. Most humans go through life on autopilot. Are you aware when you're emptying the dishwasher or is your mind elsewhere and leaving it to the body to go through its habitual movements? So let's say you're working on an exercise, say a hand on a very boring exercise. If you do... Now, doing it on nauseam like that without any intentions, you are definitely going to make anybody crazy. But I can work on so many different things on this one. So for example, on my right hand alone, I can work on coming out after the thumb and coming in before the thumb. So if I'm doing this alone, I'm working already on something. What about my left hand? I can still work on coming in before the thumb and coming out after the thumb. And I can also work on how does it feel to move from my fifth finger to my fourth finger? without stretching. Doing one or one hand loud and the other soft. <laughs> 